Hey everybody, it's Jim here. Since I started doing this YouTube channel over three years ago, every single video where I've done a setup, a repair, or any sort of work on an instrument where I've had to remove the strings, I've either shown you or talked about how I took the time to polish the frets before restringing it back up. It's a huge, huge, huge thing that a lot of guitarists, myself included years ago, ignored, but it makes a big difference in how the guitar will feel to play. And it doesn't matter if you're playing a budget guitar or a really expensive guitar, you do notice it and it is worth doing. Recently, I was approached by a company in Germany called Fretalizer. They have a whole fret polishing and care system. I agreed to demo it for them, but I thought what better way to do this instead of just focusing on this to compare it to what I already use. So we're gonna go to the bench with the Squire Stratocaster. I already have the strings off of it. We're gonna check it out against Fretknot, which is the similar product to Gorgamite, against Frying from Music Nomad, and against Fret Erasers, which many professionals do use in shop repairs and see just how it stacks up. This is one of the most common ones that you're gonna find. I have the thing kind of scratched out, but it's the Music Nomad Frine. How this works, take this out. Frine comes in a little tube and you get a micro cloth, micro mesh cloth with it. With this, as you can see, I've already taped off the fingerboard. And for the second product we're gonna use, I would recommend doing the same thing, but it's not as important. Music Nomad state on the side of the box that if this touches the fingerboard and it's bare like this per se, uh, it won't necessarily damage it, but to remove it immediately. So it's probably not the best for it. This is a nice thing to use because it's easy. Just squeeze out a little bit. Oh, a little splatter there. But again, that's why we use the tape. Let's go down. Then you take the micro mesh that's included with it. bit of excess will wipe that off just polish it down easy and that's basically one fret done as you could tell from the comparison between this one and this one it is an absolute no contest and for a lot of people this is a great thing. One of the only cons I could think of with this, first of all, you are gonna, I'd recommend taping up the fingerboard. And the other thing is, if your frets have a ton of oxidation on them, this probably isn't gonna be your number one choice. You're gonna wanna use something a little bit more heavy duty than that. Now, sticking with the easier solutions, this is something else. This is called Fret Knot. Similar to a product called Gorgamite that I used for years, it's kind of got the same ease of use going on for it. It comes in these little pre-cut squares. Now, we close it up. I'll do the same thing. Yuck. And then you get into these, which is what a lot of professionals like to use. These are called fret erasers. They come in multiple different grits. And what you'll do is you'll start with the roughest one and you'll go along, wipe off, and proceed up to the finest one until you're all done. This can do a good job of even removing some of light pitting and things like that. And honestly, with how they are, as long as you're not putting too much force in, it's not gonna mess up your fret level. So for a lot of people and a lot of techs, they rely on those. But for me, a similar kind of thing going on here. Fretlizer. This uses the same kind of idea. However, to me, it's a lot better, and I'm gonna show you exactly why. We're gonna start off with a rough grit here. We don't need 400 for these. As you can see, it comes with a multitude of different sheets with different uh, grits to them. That's 500. There we go, 800. We'll start with 800. So what we're gonna do is, this has an actual shape for the fret itself, as you can see. So if you compare that real quick with the eraser, the eraser is a rectangle. 
this is actually going all around the fret wire. So right off the bat, I like that a lot. Get this on, do boom. Use one of the rubber bands that they include with it. And with this, I wouldn't need to be wearing gloves, but I'm not taking them off at this point. So, all secure. There's even a little latch there. You can make sure that it's sitting in well. Now, we'll start with the roughest one, as I said. You don't have to put much pressure into this. Now, we're already looking really good, especially compared to the other two frets, and I haven't had to put too much into this. Finally, we're gonna to go to our finest one. Beautiful. All right, as you can see here, all three of these did a pretty good job. The reason why I like these the most is because it takes the least amount of cleanup and prep to do this. If you're gonna tape off your fingerboard, realistically, if we weren't doing just an example for YouTube, what I would do is I would go down grip by grip with each fret, starting with the roughest grits, get all that done, then move it up, then move it up. And eventually it's all gonna get done in unison with each other. It just makes life a little bit easier. And compared to these, really, these are gonna work just fine too. But I love the fact that this does have the slotted angle for frets actually to sit in. So when you are working on it, you can move it side to side far easier to make sure you're getting the entire fret. It's just, it's just a really, really, really well thought out idea, but it's basic. However, I like it and it's super effective. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of pitting here on this fret. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the roughest grid I have here with the fretlizer. As you can see there, those two are pretty much already gone. Yep, so those two little uh, divots right there, they're no longer there. We still have this one and that one. We'll turn our attention to that. And again, because it is catching inside of this little area, it's really easy and there's not a lot of margin for error. I mean, your likelihood of making an error is far less. And I'm not pressing down too hard. And just like that, now, these small little divots are gone. That's something you're not gonna be able to do with frying, something you're not gonna be able to do with fret knot. The fret erasers will also do it, but it's easier with this. And I'm not suggesting you can do major fret work with this because that's not the exactly right tool for that. However, for little ones like that, I mean, it did it, and it did it fairly quickly, and that's something that can also impact the playability, so long as, you know, you don't go too hard on it, and I tried not to, and it didn't take a whole lot of effort in order for me to remove those two. Um, Level-wise, everything should still be good. Let me double check. And I'm really pushing. No, so it didn't affect the level whatsoever uh, to put in enough force to remove those two little dents or divots that I wanted to point out there. That is really cool. The last thing I wanna point out with the new system that we have here, you don't just get fret polishing. You get this little brick. Now this is a little foam brick, which is gonna have the same basic principles. You have all of your varying grits on it, 7,000, 3,000, 1,500, 800, and 400. What these are used for are to actually smooth out the fret edges on your instrument. And that's really cool.
just like that. That took me about a minute and that actually feels a little bit better. So that's pretty much it. Honestly, you guys, I like the all-in-one system. I like that this is an affordable system and I do like that it's easy to renew and keep using it. The main two things that I love about this, again, it has to be the fact that you do have this extremely well thought out and ergonomic um, kind of bar that you're using that does have the fret engraved into it. That makes life so much easier. And part of the reason I never got huge into using the fret erasers was because I felt like it wasn't always even with this, as we were able to see in some of these, I'm able to turn it a little bit on the fret to make sure I'm covering the entire radius and not missing any one specific portion of it. And then, you know, the slot for the rubber band to sit in, it's got a good grip to it. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And it's something that fret polishing shouldn't be intimidating to people and it really is a big benefit and it doesn't matter if you're playing a squire or a fender custom shop whatever it is any guitar that has nicely polished frets is going to feel better to play period but that's all i have for you guys today going forward we are going to be using the fretalizer because it works if something works I'm gonna use it. That's just how I am. And I am grateful that they were kind enough to send me this to chest out because this is a nice solution. And now I don't have to scrub my hands 5,000 times after every single time I do a fret polish using the fret knot. That is the one thing I cannot stand whatsoever. We will be using the fretalizer on its own with no other fret polishing products when we do the restoration of that old beat up, disgustingly dirty Yamaha acoustic guitar I showed you on a previous live stream in the coming week or two, depending on scheduling. So I hope that you check that out. Let me know what you thought about today's video in the comment section down below and what you use to polish your frets. Again, check these guys out at their website, fertilizer.com, also linked in the description. Good dudes over in Germany. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take it easy, everybody.